Thanks for joining. We're going to take a look at the simple chart add-on that comes with FileMaker 19. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. The simple chart JavaScript add-ons are exactly what the name implies. They are very simple charts. They're limited to four data points, and the components of the graphs are interactive, meaning I could click on a pie wedge and execute a script. And that opens up all sorts of possibilities. The most obvious being an interactive dashboard. Simple Charts provides five different kinds of graphs in five different colors. So you have a bar, you have a pie, you have a donut, you have a line, and you have the gauge. Now, these four will display up to four values, and they have to be in separate fields on the same table. Simple Charts doesn't do related records. Now, the gauge is different in that it will add up up to four fields up to 100%. If it's above 100, it'll fill up the bar, and that's the end. A defining characteristic of simple charts is that when I click on an element, something will happen. And each one of these could be a button that does something different, even the ones in the line graph. When we go into the configurator, we'll see it's set to bar and the color is blue. And we'll see that the data source has a flag for two errors. Now we can go to this and say, display our simple charts sample data table. And we're going to do field one and field two. Now when we click save, nothing has changed because that's what it's doing by default. After you've completed these two required pieces of information, then you can go in and change the chart type into something else. And we can change the color. Series name will come pre-populated. We can change that, but we can't leave it empty because it's a required field. If we are using a line or a bar chart, these areas are relevant. If we're doing a pie, a donut, or a gauge, it doesn't matter what we put in here because it's not going to use it anyways. But if we choose this line graph and we say, let's make our x-axis, our vertical axis, be dollars, and our actual values on our points will then be dollars, we can name our axis, and then we're going to click these to make our x-axis grid and our y-axis grid. And we'll see, here's our grids. Our y-axis now have dollar signs, our data points have dollar signs, and here is our x-axis, here is our y-axis. To install simple charts, we're gonna go into layout mode. You may need to reveal your objects pane. Make sure that add-ons is selected, and then come down to this plus sign. The JavaScript add-ons will appear, we're going to be working with simple charts, so we click that one. We see a preview up here, and we see that there are tables, layouts, and scripts that will be added. At this point, simple chart has been added to our database. If we look at our scripts, we'll see that a bunch of scripts got added. If you hold down the Option key on a Mac or Alt key on Windows and you click this, it'll close them up. To put a chart on your layout, simply grab it and drag it over. Now if we go into Browse mode, we'll see that well, nothing really happened. We need to show the records from the simple charge sample data. Now when we go into browse mode, we'll see data. Simple charts is more of a widget style JavaScript add-on, meaning it is intended to be on the layout with the records that it's going to display. We could click it again and bring over a separate instance. And this would allow us to use the same code base and configure it differently. And we know it's an instance because the add-on UUID right here is a different string than this one over here. Now, in contrast to that, I could click on this and I could duplicate it. And I could put it down here. And this would be a copy. If I go into the configurator, I can change the sample data. So let's only have this display two fields change this to display a line. And that's how an instance works. Now notice down here our copy is saying no data. And the reason being because this displays in a web viewer and a web viewer has to have a unique name. And since one on this layout already exists, it added copy. So when the add-on tries to communicate with the web viewer, it can't find it. 
So what we're viewing here is four tabs. Each tab contains a simple chart instance and they're all configured differently. Now this one is displaying these fields that came with the sample data and they add up to 58. And that is what the gauge is wired up to and that's why we're seeing 58%. My second tab is my related record count. It currently doesn't have any values, but I'll put in some related records. These are portals and it's keyed to the product one key, product two key, but they're all in the same table. The point being, I have four sets of records. When I add some numbers at random here, related record values is adding them all together as where my record count is just telling me how many records I have. Tab into a few, but a zero there, just to make it interesting. When I go into my count, we'll see my line graph. And when I go to total, my donut is showing me this chart. I'm managing to display information about related records by just using calculation fields. That if I make some changes, they'll be reflected immediately in FileMaker, but they won't be reflected in my chart. That's because I need to click refresh. Now notice it only adds animation if the values actually change. Now, in order to make the refresh button, I'm going to come down here and click my configurator, hold down the option key. I'm going to make a copy of it up here. I'm going to go in, I'm going to change my icon to a magnifying glass, and I'm going to change my script to go to refresh data. Now, if we open this script and we look, we see the first step is to set the variable JSON to the script parameter. And then it's going to extract the add on UUID from the JSON. So, contrary to how we've been setting up other add-ons, this one, we can just leave this alone because it wants it in a JSON object. And not only that, we might want to pass something through these series of scripts and have it available to us at the end to make a determination what we should do in that final script step. Now, if I repeat this process, but instead make script triggers on my fields, You'll see that if I change the values and I tab between fields, I get this neat visual effect. If you're new to FileMaker, it's important to understand that FileMaker's built-in charting is much more robust than this. For example, this is a FileMaker chart. And as you'll see here, the configuration is much more robust. I can have related records. I can do quite a bit with my styles and I can display related data. Now this is set up to make a pie graph based on these related values. So if I just keep adding some, notice without a refresh, without anything, I am way past the four limit and I can just keep going and it will just keep adding them to the chart. If you ended up at this video because you're looking to do charting with FileMaker, just understand there's a lot more that you can do. And we have a course at the Productive Computing University called FileMaker Charting and Beyond. It covers the charting basics and then goes into even more things like Tableau. Because a dashboard is intended to give you a snapshot of things all around your solution, a practical tip could be to create a script it opens up different windows, different layouts, does calculations, and then puts those numbers into a global variable. At that point, you could have calculation fields that simply display that global variable. So let's talk about what sets simple chart apart from FileMaker charting. If I hover over a wedge here, I can see that this is product one. And if I click it, I get this message, which this is showing me a JSON object. I can change this script to make that go wherever I want. I'm going to go into script and this simple chart events is the script that runs when I click on a graph element. And that's what it's showing and that's why you're seeing that JSON object. But we're going to comment that out. We're going to have it do a custom script. And this is the script that it'll run. It'll take that JSON object, it'll parse it out into variables. It's going to check which wedge is it that I clicked on. So if I click on this wedge named product1, it will open up a card window. It'll go to product one tab, and it will show me this graph that's being assembled by those global variables that are being displayed through a calculation field, giving me complete control. And even at this level, I could have this launch another script. My graphs could be part of my interface. 
I really enjoy hearing how you make use of these tools. And if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment. Remember that liking a video is a great way to let us know we're producing the content that you find useful. As always, I remind you about the fundamentals for using JavaScript add-ons video that'll also be in the description. That is really useful if you're gonna use this in a production environment, especially this one if you're gonna make the changes. Thanks for joining. I'll see you in the next video.